In this brief video presentation, I will be demonstrating the approach for adding a variety of data types to the Quantum GIS application, or QGIS, and also highlight how you can look at the information about various data sets to ensure that you are setting the proper uh, coordinate reference system and other parameters for those data sets so that they will be displayed properly within a map environment. Starting with the basic screen for a blank new project in Quantum GIS, the first thing you want to do is check the project settings and unless you are absolutely certain that all of the data sets that you will be working with are in the same coordinate reference system, you want to enable the um, on-the-fly uh, reprojection. You do that by going to the Project menu, going to Project Properties, and under CRS for the project, you want to enable on-the-fly CRS transformation. With this, you define what the project coordinate reference system is. In this case, we're going to keep the default value of a WGS84 coordinate reference system, which corresponds to the EPSG code 4326. And we're going to then basically configure our project so that as new data are added, as long as the coordinate reference systems are defined for those data, QGIS will reproject those data to align with the WGS84 coordinate reference system. Having changed this setting, I will click on OK, and now my project coordinate reference system is set to WGS84. And we can see that down in the lower right hand corner here where it shows EPSG4326 as the um, current coordinate reference system. And it also shows that on-the-fly reprojection is enabled. We can now start adding data to our project. We're going to start with elevation or, or with elevation data represented in a raster model or digital elevation model for the state of New Mexico. In all instances, I have already downloaded the data that I will be showing from either the New Mexico Resource Geographic Information System or in the case of the Geographic Names Information System tabular data directly from the GNIS system. So to add a raster data set, I choose the Add Raster Layer uh, button here on the left-hand side of the screen. By the way, these are the default, this is the default layout of the controls within Quantum GIS. As you work with Quantum GIS, you can customize the layout, or if somebody else has been working on the same system as you, they might have changed them before you are seeing it. So you want to look for this, this button, but it may not be in this location. You can also add layers by going to the layer menu and choosing to add a raster layer or vector layer or other layer types from the layer menu. In this case, I'm going to use the, the button on the screen. So I'm going to choose to add a raster layer, and I'm going to go to the directory on my hard drive where I have st uh, stored the data, and I'm going to then add the digital elevation model, which in this case um, was downloaded as a, a raster file in the IMG format, and I'm going to choose Open. In this case, QGIS is asking me to define the layer's coordinate reference system, and I previously looked at the documentation that corresponds to this data set and was able to determine that it is already in the WGS84 EPSG4326 coordinate reference system. So I can make, that, make sure that that is highlighted here and then click on OK. You can see now the data for that digital elevation model for the state of New Mexico are being displayed. 
You can experiment with different styles for rendering the data that you're looking at in your map project by double clicking on a given layer where that will then bring up the layer properties and then you can start to choose different methods for um, modifying how those data are rendered. In this case, you know, we could choose to change the color gradient from black to white or white to black. Um, or we can just cancel out of here and move on to adding additional data sets. I do encourage you to experiment with different uh, styling of your data sets, but for this demonstration, we're going to pretty much just stick with largely the defaults. So we've now added this digital elevation model to our, to our map. Now let's add another raster data set, which is a Landsat mosaic for Bernalillo County. So this is another IMG file that I have downloaded from the New Mexico Argus system. I can click on that and you can see that it is now being superimposed over the Bernal or over the the statewide data set and you can actually see how that particular image corresponds to just the boundaries of Bernalillo County within New Mexico. If we want to zoom in to take a closer look at those data, I can choose the zoom tool and drag a box or just click in the area that I would like to zoom to. And you can start to see more detail in this imagery data set. If you want to quickly zoom to the spatial extent of a given data set, you can right click on that on that particular data set and choose zoom to layer extent and that will zoom you out to the spatial extent of that particular data set so this zoomed us out to the extent of that Bernalillo County Landsat data set and if we zoom to the layer extent for the statewide elevation data set we go back to the statewide view so now let's add some vector data so we can go to the add vector layer button here and again you could do the same thing with the layer menu up above choosing add vector layer in this case we're going to we're going to click on the add vector layer button and here we're going to browse to the file that we want to add and in this case we're going to first add the contour lines for the state of New Mexico. Again, this is a shape file in this case that I downloaded previously for 500 foot contour lines for the entire state. So I click on the .shp file that I would like to add, click open. It shows up here in the data set field and I click on open again. And it is then added to my my uh, data set that it, my set of data sets that are shown in the table of contents here on the left and you can see it's overlaid on top of in this case the underlying elevation model but you can see it is also obscured by the landsat data ideally what i would like to do is drag this so that it is on top of both sets of imagery data as those data would otherwise obscure this vector data set. I might also want to change the name of this data set so that it's a little bit more understandable. So I can double click on this and under the general tab change this to contours and maybe I would display that as 500 500 foot contours so that as it shows up in the table of contents and then in any any cartographic legends that I develop later it would show up there as well so that it's a little bit more clear and likewise I can change the styling for this but at this point I'll leave it as its default so now let's add some additional vector data For example, 
the state boundary And you can see that we've now basically draped the state boundary over the entire um, map image, which is not necessarily the, uh, the product we're looking for. So if I double click on this, I will actually modify the style so that basically I'm going to have it filled. I'm going to use just a simple line outline style that has only a boundary color. So maybe we want to change the boundary color to red. But no fill color. And we'll say OK. So now you can see that the state boundary is just providing the edge around the state. Likewise, maybe we downloaded some census data. So here we have the zip code tabulation areas from 2010. We choose that shape file. It shows up here in the dialog. We say open. And we can see here the zip code tabulation areas. Again, where you can then modify the rendering of those zip code tabulation areas according to whatever criteria you would like. So in this case, perhaps again, we would choose to use some sort of simple outline. Perhaps in this case, some shade of gray. We say OK. And now we can see the boundaries of those zip code tabulation areas. We can once again zoom in in the Bernalillo County area. And you can start to see the combination of these various data sets where you have the underlying digital elevation model. Then we have the Landsat image in the foreground. We have the purple lines representing the 500 foot contour lines. We ha and we have the zip code tabulation areas. Finally, let's add a um, tabular data set that contains XY values as an additional data set that we want to use in our map. So this is an example of data that may actually start life in a table, but if that table contains coordinates that can be interpreted as a location, you can then automatically add it to your map. In this case, we would choose to add a delimited text layer. We would browse to the file that contains the delimited text. In this case, there's this NM Features 2013 -08 text file that I downloaded from the Geographic Names Information System website. I know that from reading the documentation that this is actually not comma separated or tab delimited, but instead it uses the pipe symbol or this vertical line to delimit the separate fields of the data set. And I can see down below, once I have specified that delimiter, I see a preview of the columns of data that are in this tabular data set. I can now see also see that there are some fields that are representing the primary latitude and primary longitude in decimal degrees. From reading the documentation for this data set, I also see that there are coordinates in latitude and longitude that are provided in degrees and minutes and seconds, an alternative way of essentially encoding latitude and longitude. In this case, we don't want to have to convert those composite degree, minute, second fields that you see here, where it says primary lat DMS, primary long DMS. Instead, we want to use these primary lat decimal for decimal degrees and primary long decimal degrees as the source of our XY coordinates. So here, we can actually then specify our X field, which 
if you remember your basic Cartesian coordinates, X is essentially the horizontal axis. And when we're talking about geographic coordinates, that is the longitude. So here we can choose the source longitude decimal as our X field. And we can choose source longitude or a source latitude decimal as our Y field, as Y is the vertical or north-south axis, and latitude is the name of the uh, measurement of north-south uh, coordinates in a geographic coordinate system. Having specified the name of the file, what we want to name the layer, what the delimiters are, and what the X and Y fields are, we can choose OK. And in this case, we're seeing that some records were discarded because there were missing geometry definitions, and that's OK. We're specifying the coordinate reference system as it's not by definition defined as a part of the data set. From reading the documentation, I also know that these coordinates are also in the EPSG 4326 WGS84 coordinate reference system. So I'll go with that default value and I'll say OK. And you can see these additional points have now been added to my map representing those named locations from the Geographic Names Information System. This is just the beginning of how you might be able to add or interact with a variety of data types that you might start working with in your spatial data management activities. But this has hopefully provided a brief introduction to um, get you started in working with Quantum GIS and the variety of data sets that you're likely to uh, encounter in your upcoming assignments and the work in developing your own data sets.